Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo flawless guide on the Prophecy Dungeon on the Hunter. Now there's been a whole new suite of weapons introduced to this and some of them are really good. They're the Trials of the Nine weapons from Destiny 2, Year 1. And the Pulse Rifle's mental. Uh, top 3 Night Stalker for dodging, invis and reloading. With a Horde, Cartesian Coordinate uh, Fusion Rifle on the Energy. I'll be switching, I'll be starting with the Fallen Guillotine Sword. And then I'll be changing to the Tarantula for the rest of the run. As you can see, the mods I'm using, Lucent Blade, which I actually kept on for the whole run. I, I, I don't I don't know why, but uh, the main things are the Ammo Scavengers, the, 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 the Artifact Ammo Scavenger for Fusions and Linears, and the Particle Deconstruction in the, the Classic uh, slot. That is key for doing this because it increases damage with Fusion Rifles the more you use it. So you hit it, you put, apply a debuff to the, the enemy, and then your next fusion rifle shots will then stack in damage. So that's what I'm going to be using. As you can see, there's some of the weapons that I actually got from farming this. Man, just go for that pulse rifle. You get it from the boss. It's very good. I'll, I'll explain what weapons you get from what encounters as we go through. So when you start this run off, make sure you've got your stompies on, which I didn't show that I'll be using, but... You use the stompies for the first section, and what we're going to do is we're going to jump on this big globe and we'll go through the portal, and then we're going to use a single jump, then a boost. You've got one single jump and two boosts, so you're going to use a single jump and then a boost to get into the tube. You're going to save your second boost jump for at the top. So one boost, a jump, then a boost. Sword about two thirds of the way up, and then just do a single jump, not your boost, and while you're up off off the pipe call your spiral. All spirals are fast call, so it's intrinsic to spirals now. Spiral at the top, dodge right, and then use your last boost jump to jump and then sword onto the platform, and there you go. And as you can see here, <coughs> single jump, sword, boost jump, sword, boost, and you're over here. Change back to my loadout that I'll be using for the rest of the run. We'll change to the tarantula, uh, but just to keep the fallen guillotine on, sorry, but we're we'll changing the, the blade type. I had a different blade type on that gave me more ammo, so I'm going to rally with that blade type on. It gives me more ammunition, and I'll change back to Jagged Edge. So, <clears throat> the way I do this first encounter really is kind of shock and all. I'm going to get Dark Motes first, so I'm coming over, I'm pre-firing a Wither Horde, uh, and I'll put another, I'll put two, a Wither Horde on the ground, and I'll hit him with a Fusion Rifle, and I'll put another Wither Horde. That kills him and the adds. So what, what I'll do there, now I was really unlucky there, <clears throat> to the, the the boss blast of me when I was trying to go invis. What I done was I, I literally pulled my sword out and sort of back on the platform. So now I've kind of I should have been invisible going to slam this, but with that boss just being in the, the ideal place, uh, kind of ruined that. So what I'm looking for now. So that that was how I got my dark modes. It will be the same every time you come in here. You'll be able to do those two ads at the same time every time. What I was doing there was jumping up in the middle of the two sets of dark modes and slamming on top of both of them. It gets rid of both of them. So one set of motes will get rid of two of the fonts of light. Wither Horde is so good in here for ad control. It's I haven't really used the Wither Horde in any video. It's the first time I've made it used it in a video. Uh, but it just does such a good job in here. So, I, as you can see, I got rid of the two dark motes, the two dark fonts of light. So the idea is, as I say, shock and awe, just, you can see I'm almost always moving. So, fire that on him, I'm going to dodge going viz, and then I'm going to take him down in the light. So, for anybody that doesn't know, the way that the fonts work here is, it's not where the ad is, it's where you are. So as you can see where my super bar is, Every time I run between dark and light, it changes. There's a black haze above where the super bar is. That denotes what motes I will produce. You can see there, I jumped up in between, in between the two sets of fonts and took both of them out. Now, I'm doing damage to the boss. You can see I'm getting yellow numbers. It's not because, uh, it's not because he's tethered. You'll see when the tether runs out, uh, he will continue to get yellow numbers. I'm just trying to take these ads. I'm not. I've done a fair amount of damage to the boss. Now I'm just going to get my sword out and save my fusion rifle. And when he shields, 
<clears throat> what to do is dodge. You'll go on Viz, he won't turn round and you can still keep doing damage. Now, this is a two phase because the Warlock kind of suffers from... That, sorry, the Hunter suffers from not being able to attack the boss when he is tethered. But it's a pretty simple two phase, so... Let's, let's recap the first phase. phase. From where I went, uh, I, can, I took out the two dark... I got two dark moats. I've done the exact same thing again. Dodge and then pick up the moats. If you dodge or use your class ability while you've got the moats, you will lose them. So what you need to dodge before you get five moats, right? It's it's fi it's <clears throat> it's five moats to uh, it's five <clears throat> excuse me it's five moats to to be, be, be able to slam, to actually create a moat. So you can see I've got light moats here. Now, when you do this second set of, of moats, what you'll notice is that they're split up. You can't jump up in between like two sets of light or two sets of dark. Slam and break both of them because they split them up sometimes as like, sometimes there's three light. So there we go, and as soon as you land, dodge immediately to go invisible so that you're keeping yourself protected now i'm trying to see whether i got both the the, the both the sets of uh light i think i did get myself a cheeky power bonus and there's some dark moats now you might see you, you might do this yourself that you'll sometimes you'll you'll go on viz and you'll still be getting shot the reason for that is, if you keep running in the same direction that you were running in when the ads were shooting at you, when you're invisible, they are still going to keep shooting. And I was unfortunate that I thought that knight was dead, uh, and he wasn't, so I'll just kill him here, get those dark moats, and it gave me more light. Perfect. So, you, ha you can see, it's that's probably the most ambiguous part of this, is... Making sure you're in the right colour, the right, the right shade. So we're just, just going to clear as many of these ads as possible before, and hopefully, because of where I am, hopefully, it will, it will kill the the, the knight, which it did. Now I just need to slam one more dark, and then we'll kill the boss. So that, just a recap. Until. I'm just going to tether. Normally I don't tether straight away, but there were so many ads that if I tether and grab the ads, uh, doing damage to the boss, it, the tether shares damage. So now I'll just get the melt on. You can see when he goes to attack, you can just run round the other way and, and, and attack him from the other side. Now I'll change to tarantula, which I will keep on for the rest of the run. So to recap, your safe spots are round the edge. Uh, you need to create five moats of any color to be able to to create a singular moat that you can slam. You can jump up in between the moats, the, the fonts of light, and slam two at a time. Make sure you're higher than the highest platform that you're trying to slam on. And when you're dealing with the boss, make sure you get your tether down. And, and that's it. That's how you do the first encounter. This next section... It's not really an encounter per se. Literally what you've got to do is destroy the blights. There's, there are three sets of blights and there will be three sets of three blights. So once you can destroy the blights, you don't have to kill all the adds, but it's advisable just for safety purposes to kill them all. So when you get in range, three snipers are going to appear. This will be the same for every section. I think it's called Heaven and Hell. So take out the sniper so you don't have to worry about collateral fire. And then what I kind of do is I kind of try and get these ads to kind of group up and the Wither Horde can deal with them all. Now you will have, in this section, each one of the blights will have a boss ad. So it can be, as you can see here, it can be Orange Bar taking Cabal, it can be taking Knights, it can be Snipers. Uh, what I try and do is just as I say get the ads to, to group up 
and then I can take, I can bulk take them out. I'm not going to spend too much time actually chasing ads around. Uh, this is where ha having, having that, uh, that mod from the artifact that gives you linear and fusion rifle scavenger. It's very good for this run. That's why I'm using a linear and a fusion. Obviously, particle deconstruction plays a massive part. So I'm just I'm going to use the linear to take the last blight out, it's just to save my my special. Once you've taken all the blights out, Toland's soul will be in the center of the blights. You can't interact with it until you've taken all three blights out, and it will show the direction that it goes off in is the direction of the next set of blights. And as you can see, rinse and repeat. I save if I if I've got it at the time. I save my tether for the Taken Knights, because they, they're, they're a bit of a nightmare. As you can see, we've got the, the Taken Hobgoblins here. I'm just literally wanting to take as many of these little ads as I can so I can go about my business, minding my own business, and go about my business uh, without having hordes of little annoying Taken ads uh, clawing at my back. So again, I'm just like dropping with a horde. The reason I decide to use... is probably something I should address. The reason I decide to use Weather Horde is a lot of followers and subscribers use this weapon and I have never used it in a video and I feel like, well, if it's good enough for other people to use, it is, I, I, I've been called a Destiny snob for not using it. Maybe I am a Destiny snob because I prefer accuracy over cheese weapons. But it's actually a really good weapon, so for everybody I've ever said, oh, the Weather Horde is... I apologise. It's actually a half decent weapon. Probably won't use it again, but it's it's a half decent weapon. So Toll and Soul went off in this direction. Watch out for the big uh, invisible minotaurs. If you need to take one out, the fusion rifle makes light work of them. Just take, just hit, hit it, apply the debuff, and then melt it. As you can see here, just take the three snipers out. Now I'm looking. I can see that this is the knight's one, so now I'm going to tether, and now I am going to use my fusion rifle, and that should. You can see very light work of them. Now, hopefully, I'm just going to stay by by the the tether and watch the ads all come in, and, and just the, the combination of tether and weather horde. And there's still still a bunch, they're just late to the party. Hopefully, the tether lasts. It doesn't really matter because they're going to walk into the weather horde anyway. Uh, and and that's this section. Uh, so from weapons that you can get from this. Oh, I, I never said in the first encounter what you can get from that. You can get the sniper and the hand cannon from the first one. Uh, the first encounter with the big cabal boss. Uh, from <clears throat> the next encounter you can get the sidearm and the auto rifle which they're okay. The sidearm is really good. Auto rifle, that's an auto rifle so for an auto rifle it's good. And then from the boss encounter you get the hand can uh, the, the shotgun and the, uh, the pulse rifle. Shotgun is the same archetype as Fell Winters, so probably pretty desirable, and the Pulse Rifle is just insane. That is going to be my crucible weapon for the foreseeable future. I, I was consistently taking out uh, Vex Mythoclast, not the charged linear shot. Uh, that and the new exotic linear fusion rifle I just couldn't compete with because the the one hits. Uh, but every, every other weapon, thorn, hand cannons, everything else, I was melting because the fire rate is insane. So, really worth farming these encounters. But I, I will say at the start of each encounter, just, just to be clear, because I'm going to timestamp all these encounters so that you can skip to the relevant encounter you've got. So, now we are on to the hexahedron. Now, the hexahedron room, it's it used to really confuse me. It doesn't know. Uh, it's actually a very, very simple encounter. Uh, literally, each room is is basically one of the sides or the ceiling. They're all all the rooms you can see here. Uh, the, w the walls are going to be the different rooms that you can teleport into. The idea of this encounter is you're going to get two waves of taken acolytes, and you will have. Th this is just the enemy setup. Let's talk about the enemy setup. Uh, two waves of taken acolytes and then you'll have two snipers up on the walls. For every sniper you kill, you will get a knight. And it's the knights that will produce, obviously, the, 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 
the take the dark or light motes. Again, depending on what shade you're in, if you're in the dark and you kill an ad, you will get dark motes. If you're in the light and you kill them while you're in the light, you will get light motes. There will be a take it, there will be Tolan Soul will be on one of the circles, either on one of the four sides or on the ceiling. If he's on one of the four sides, whichever font he is above, so if it's a dark font he's above, as you can see there, Tolan Soul is above a light font. I need to produce light motes, slam them where where tail Tol and Soul is, to slam them on that font where Tol and Soul is, and and that's 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 the encounter of the ads. The, the big ads will despawn. Uh, the snipers and the, any knights that are still up, they will despawn. And once you run into the center, you'll be teleported to another room. There are six rooms. There are six encounters. As you can see, uh, I'm, I need light mode. So I'm making sure I've got that light wisp on the bottom left of my screen. If the knight goes to fire at you, and, and to avoid that, jump past him. He won't change. It's like he's locked in. He's, he, his aim is locked in once he fires at you. Now, six encounters, they all work the same way. As soon as you get teleported, what I do is I spin around immediately and look to see where Tolan Soul is. He's not on any of the walls. It means he's on the ceiling, which means I can choose any fonts I want. So, obviously, I have to make them all the same. So, I still need to produce that singular mote of light. Or dark but I can choose but what it seems like and you'll notice here what it seems like is uh, when he's on the ceiling uh, you get you get to choose what more you want when he's on the ceiling uh, it sets you back a room so it, it you might have to do more than six encounters not done anything wrong it just seems to be that's the way it is now I haven't noticed if there is a correlation between why it makes you do more rooms than six. That's the only thing I can think of because, as I say, I've done this multiple times and it seems like the more ceiling routes that I get, the more ceiling uh, times that Tolan's on the ceiling, the more rooms I have to do. So I think that's what the correlation is between having to do more than six. So as you can see, I need light mode, so I'm gonna kill these two snipers. Make sure you're in cover when you kill them so that the darkness blast doesn't leave you uh, in real trouble. And again, you've got to watch out for the snipers. So you can see I've made dark light motes and then I'll just jump past them. Make sure I've still got light on my screen. Kill him. And there we go. And then I'll go and slam. If you're taking heat from the sniper, it's exactly the same as the, 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 first, thing, the first real encounter. Dodge before you pick your motes up and do it invisible and then the, ad, the ads can't see you. Having, having sniper resist also helps massively as well. So as soon as I get into the room, I, I try and attack the two waves of ads really quickly, putting putting the weather horde down. Uh, if if they put too many of these up, the, the taken eyes, just melee them. Uh, the, the weather horde on the ground won't kill them, but the, a direct hit will. So you can see I'm just looking at my location, so it's like I need dark motes. Take both of them down. There, yep, there's Tolan Soul above there. So I'm just gonna go over here. Now I'm in the dark. You can see the dark wisp. Collect these dark motes. There's your boy there. I'll just jump out the way of his shot. And then I've seen the sniper beating me, so a dodge go and viz. And then just take the direct route to where I need to slam. If you're good for ammo. Just go, just, as I say, every time, just go to the center. If, they, if there is a heap of ads up and you're good for ammo, uh, if there's a heap of ads up, uh, just go invisible. So I've done the dodge invis, which I've already said this, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna reiterate it. The reason why I went top tree is obviously I'll do more damage to the boss with bottom tree, uh, the, the, the Mobius Quiver, the six shot. I will do more damage to the boss with that, but I wanted the utility of reload, the dodge reload. So now I'll just take him out there, and then I know the other sniper is above me. There we go, and now I will take out. I need light motes, so make sure I'm in the light. And it really is, 
it really is about movement. This whole dungeon is about movement. There isn't really many places where you can just stand and you'll be safe here if you stand and shoot. You will take a fair amount of damage everywhere. So you can see there's lots of ads, dodge, chrome fizz, and I'm just getting out of there. You know? Collect some of this ammo. Sometimes, if I haven't got enough ammo, uh, if I haven't got enough ammo, I'll clear a wave of ads just to get ammo. And then, uh, what when you when you come into this room and there are no fonts you know you're at the boss be careful for these bosses because they're a slam attack a stomp like all stomp attacks is quite extreme so dodge go over here i just keep myself away from him so that he can't stomp me and there we go you see how much damage that fusion rifle does so just keep moving use your use your dodge but don't don't be letting yourself run out of dodge. Don't just be using it willy-nilly for anything. Save your dodge for when you need it. Uh, when the knights fire at you, just as soon as they start firing at you, <clears throat> move out the way of it. It's that, it really is that simple. The fusion rifle will take them down with two shots. Use your linear to take the snipers down. And that is the hexahedron room. Once you've done the hexahedron room, then you will move on to the Mario section. <laughs> So once you've done the hexahedron, you're going to come out and you're going to spiral over uh, to this doorway. And then when you go through here, everything's going to change. And no, it's just a spiral race. So I say a race. It's not a race. It's a, it's a, it's a tr jumping section for your spiral with no jumping. So it's not really a jumping section. To get what I mean, there's no really, there isn't really anywhere else in the game that's got anything like this. So... You've got these ribbons. These ribbons are going to take you. See them going all the way down into the distance. Uh, so I normally just go full tilt. Now I have the the raid spiral, which is about twenty percent faster <clears throat> than any other spiral in the game. That's why I've got it. It's not ideal for this because you put yourself in a lot of jeopardy spiraling around this. So if you just want to get past this quickly. Take this spiral off and just use a regular 160. Uh, but if you're unsure about spiral, you can run this whole section. Uh, as you can see there, the spiral is just mental. But what you can also do is when you get to any corners, any jumps, anything, as you can see here. Now, I normally just jump them and use my boost to keep me on there. You can just, you literally can just come off your spiral. There will be snipers positioned tactically and you can just take them out and move forward the, the, there's no right or wrong way to do this there's no right or wrong way to do the only the, the whole dungeon there's no right or wrong way but what i would say about uh doing this but do, doing this dungeon is and i've already said it a few times in this video and previous videos it's all about movement you cannot really expect to do this dungeon successfully being static. Uh, another thing about just just some watching that on the you know watching that back, firing your grenade launcher. You have three lanes on your grenade launcher when you AD, when you hit fire it. The middle lane is is like your reticle if you like. That's that's what you're aiming for, right? As you can see, I hit that, but it just bounced off. Nice. Uh, and then the more distance, it becomes an estimation. But you use the middle line of any grenade launcher as your guide for where you're supposed to aim. So once you get, follow follow my path, once you get to this point, we're just going to, this is like the big crazy jump. So you're going to jump from here. I haven't got stompies on. I, I Stompies actually get me killed sometimes here. The amount of flawless runs that I've failed because my st stompies have overshot a platform. Uh, so, I, I, but I've got, obviously I've got very high, uh, nearly max mobility. And that's because, in case you don't know, which I'm sure most people do, but in case you don't know, your class ability on any character is linked to one of the main stats. So, hunters intrinsically have more uh, mobility. So, the higher your mobility, faster you get your dodge back. Warlocks, higher your recovery, faster you get your rift back. Titans, higher your resilience, faster you get your barricade back. 
So this is a pretty simple little spiral section. Just watch out for the blue walls. This last pyramid we're going to go through is where the hidden chest is. Uh, I didn't. I haven't showed where the hidden chests are. I'm pretty sure everybody will know where they are. I didn't show them. The first one is in the heaven and hell section where you've got to take out the blights, and it's just a little entrance uh, next next to like three pillars. And that where I just shot there is where the the hidden chest is. Here, there's only two in the in the in the, the dungeon, and now you're going to go up the teleporter. You can actually spiral off where we've just jumped and just jump off your spiral. And 90% of the time, that actually does take you up. Uh, but be very careful doing that because I actually have a clip of me doing that, jumping off my spiral, landing in the teleporter's kind of grip, and it grabbed me and threw me into my spiral. Not during these runs. it was I was doing it on the Warlock a while ago. Uh, and that ended a flawless run. So that is... All of that section, that's the hexahedron, right up to, through the spiral. And now we are at the boss section. So the boss room, in essence, works the same way as all the other encounters. You will have knights spawning. You'll have, it, instead of acolytes, you will have taken, taken uh, thrall uh, spawning. You'll have to produce motes of light based on the fonts of light that are there. So if it's, I think in the first room here, it's going to be too light and a dark. So I have to produce two sets of light motes. That's five each time. So I have to kill two knights with two, uh, uh, when I'm in the light. Uh, two sets of two knights when I'm in the light. One set when I'm in the dark. But there's also the added caveat, the added bonus in this room as you've got the boss in each corner. So the idea is in any of these rooms is to try to clear one boss pretty quickly and that gives you a free zone when you slam the font you will that you'll get a, a pretty large taken ogre clear him don't let him run about because he, he can make life very difficult and as you can see here because i was trying to clear this room so quickly I took a lot of damage here much more damage than i normally take and that's because there were still ads up so it's kind of an idea to make sure all the ads are dead Another thing you can use that I didn't, you can use protective light, it's a void chargeable light mod and it gives you substantial damage resistance when your shields are, shields are depleted. So you can put that on or you can be an idiot like me and have Lucent Blade on the whole run even though you're not using a sword. Uh, as you can see, I'm taking tons of damage but I need to make sure this... Uh, this uh, ogre dies and now now I can clear ads pretty safely I've got two clear sides I need one more font one more uh, light set of moats so I'm gonna make sure I'm in the light my dodge really helps here I'm just gonna use I don't really like spam and fusion rifle shots because I need to keep that ammo but if it's a choice between needing to farm a little bit more ammo or dying I'll farm the ammo once you slam all three sides and clear all three bosses, I'm just going to use my linear fusion rifle to take this over out so I can save some... I've got enough special here. You will, if you don't have enough ammunition, if you feel like you need more, you can farm these ads you see there, the three uh, scions, taking scions. Uh, they... Uh, they, they spawn relentlessly, so every, I say relentlessly, they'll keep spawning, the knights won't, or anything like that, just those ads will, so you can farm those ads. As soon as I come in, you can see here, putting some work into the boss, uh, dodge, reload my uh, linear fusion rifle. Now, this was the problem that I had, was I, I kind of come up with a strategy, and then didn't do it, so I moved too quickly there. I'm using the the linear to do damage to the boss and try to save some of my fusion rifle for the end. I moved too quickly there. Uh, I should have just moved up one platform. This is a three phase by the way. Uh, I actually done better damage than this on a previous run where I killed him about halfway through the, sec the, sec the, the third. It was still a three phase but it was like more like a two and a half. 
make sure at this section you well I say make sure you use, it's it's entirely up to you. Uh, you can change I've got on my chest plate which I showed at the start I've got concussive dampener on here you can actually switch that out and put uh, put uh, sniper damage resist on so the other the other kind of thing here you'll see on the left of the screen dark entropy now the reason we have to keep moving up when we're on these platforms is see I'm just out of the reach of it so if I go down it'll start going away he has an aura. This this uh, e Kel Echo has an aura. I'll just hit him with a direct shot, and it'll keep doing tick damage. Uh, you see there. You see the reticle still ticking. He'll still be taking damage even though he's gone, which is why the anarchy was so top tier here. Uh, he has an aura around him, which spreads over about a platform. It has platform and then the pla a platform away from him, maybe a platform and a half. If you're outside that aura as he's moving, you will gain dark entropy. And if it hits times 10, you're dead. You have to keep cleansing it by staying close to him. So that's why when he moves, we move up. But you should really just follow him. And then in the middle platform, just forget about him, get to the end. And then you're, that's where you're going to be do damage. But I move too quickly, which is why normally I get him up to the O or the H. Uh, but I didn't because... I, I moved too quickly. Now we're in the back in one of the rooms. It's the same setup. We're going to have two knights and a set of ads, uh, boss in each section. I actually like this room. I called it. I've always called this is the light room, uh, because it's like a little light. <laughs> I, I don't know. I didn't need to explain that. I don't think. So what we're going to do is, as I say, we're just running, a dodge, go and fizz, and got all of them all the moats there which was perfect now there is still an add up not too bored about them because the knights aren't up and i'm going to use millennia to take out the ogre there we go and dodge go and viz get out of there assess the situation need more light so go and take this light and him dodge go invisible which throws off the ads, even though there's only one ad, it throws them off. Means he doesn't follow me over here. And then reload my linear. Put, put a weather horde down. And if you get that crit on the ogre, then it, it just makes the second shot a lot easier. Now these ads do multiply. So I'm at the wrong side here because the boss is still there. I'm just, I'm just putting weather horde everywhere. I just want these ads down. Now I need to kill the knights in the dark, because we need darkness. We need dark moats. Uh, hopefully they'll all run in there. I don't really want to use too much ammunition. So there we go. Dodge going viz. I've got all the dark moats I need. So if you've got enough ammo, so I haven't, but if you have got enough, then I'll just kill him with the fusion rifle. If you've got enough ammo, just go and viz. And, and run away, but I, I don't. I need more special, which we've just got there. It's heavy down here, and I, I still want a bit more. So the ads have just spawned in. These ads, as I've said before, will just periodically keep spawning in, but very easy to take care of because there's no bosses, there's no knights, it's just you and the ads. And there we go. I'll just see what ammo that dropped. not a ton I think there's a brick of special there we go and I'm just gonna go that's enough but it was it was quite unfortunate that I never I never I never went into the boss with full ammo so when we drop him you can save your tether for the end or you can do your tether here so what I try and do is I get him to fire his darkness blast so as you can see, I'm keeping. I'm. I'm not firing my tether just yet. I want to see what the damage is like when I don't fire my tether. Throw my grenade. There's the two snipers. Take the snipers and then go back to damaging him. And then as you can see, he's moved up. So I'm going to move up with him. I can keep that pillar in between us. And then start hitting him again. This is the way I should have done it in the first section. Now I'll move up, 
dodge going viz. And now I've only took one sniper out because I want to get back to doing DPS. Now I'm going to move because he's going to move and there's still another sniper. So what I'm probably going to do, this is what I call the middle platform. I'll put a wither horde on him. And then dodge going viz because they're, they're there, they're alive. Just make sure to see if they dropped any ammo. Now I can start doing damage to him and I don't have to move again. This is going to be where I'm going to do damage to him over the next couple of platforms. But you can see I don't have a lot of ammo. So I'll reload, get the tether down, and just go at him with what I've got. If, so he will fire his darkness blast wherever you are. Make sure you're in a position where you're on one side. So you can see here, I'm just hitting him with Wither Horde. Just to try and get that additional damage. I try and make sure I'm on one side of the stairs. And when he fires his darkness blast just move to the other side and there's, there'll be plenty of room you can dodge if you want to make it quicker because you should always have a dodge and then as I say what I'm doing now is I'm just going back just to see if anybody dropped any lovely ammo for me now you'll just notice there I got ammo that's because enough time had passed without me having ammo and the game gives you any ammo that might be lying about anywhere that's the, uh, I've heard it called the pity or the mercy rule. It, it's just, it, I don't know what it's called, but it's it's a mechanic that if you don't have special or heavy, uh, I, th I think you have to run out of two things before it starts giving you it. If you run out of primary, I'm not sure if it gives you that fast, but obviously you can't run out of primary now. This, we, we lucked out because there is one room I don't like, which is what I call the dark room. And it's like, got a big section in the middle and you run around right around the edges. I don't like that room. This room's okay because there's lots of cover. Now <clears throat> just just for future reference if you're wondering because sometimes it can be kind of uh, confusing where light is in this room. If you ever need to slam light or make light molts where I am now this this kind of this kind of section uh, I, I ran away there just because I was taking a lot of damage and I knew if I'd have slammed, I'd have probably have died. Uh, the, the structure in the center, if you get up on top of the structure, that will always be light up there. So I'm trying to save ammo. I dropped quite a bit of special there. When I dropped that double brick, straight away I was like, yep, yeah, <clears throat> uh, th this is going to be a good run. What, I, I always think that when the game starts giving me stuff I need, I'm like, yep, yeah, this is, this is going to be a good run. So I'm going to try, I'm, I'm just trying to stay around the area uh, that, I've, that I've got free. I haven't got a dodge, I, so I'm moving around about the structure using the, the intrinsic cover that's in this area. Just move past them and then I've got a dodge, dodge, pick the moats up and then e easy work. Slam, take out the ogre. If you're being pushed heavily, you don't have to use. Uh, you can use your fusion. It's probably better, as I say, to stay alive. You see how they multiply. It can be really obnoxious how quickly they can increase in numbers. But the wither horde just is like. I can't believe I'm bigging the wither horde up, but it's very good. I did have a bit of fun using it. So, still got tons of ads. I want to take as many of these ads as possible. I need dark moats, so where I am is probably good. So, just... I, I try I try to, you can see there, I, what I try to do is I try to get the ads to group up. So I'm not having to like spam shots all the time. I want the ads to come to the damage. So that's all the ads. I felt like that's all the ads I needed to take. That's the first set of dark. And then we'll go around here. And I'll use my my linear fusion rifle. And uh, take out the 
last last one that we need and there we go we've got one moats head over slam <clears throat> how much ammo have i got not enough so i'm gonna back away i'm just looking to see if there's any ammo lying about there's heavy i can dodge pick up that heavy <clears throat> so i've decided i want some more special so i'm gonna take out the ogre because i know i've got a lot of heavy lying about so i, I wasn't too bothered about actually using heavy there we got brick of special seeing that i ended up with 12 there 12 fusion rifle shots and now again still do still have a little look about oh there we go oh look at this it's christmas so now i can go in do damage and this should be my last phase so again <clears throat> it's up to you whether you fire the, the tether at the start or the end you, they're the the biggest amount of dps free that you'll get is at the start of the end let him fire his darkness blast at this first before you start damaging him. So we've got him tethered. And that's why you don't do that. So that that cost that cost me time. I thought I was gonna be safe from his darkness blast because I was in cover, but I just caught my shoulder. So now what we're gonna do when you start rushing things, that's when things go wrong, and that's what happened. I've tried to get the biggest amount of DPS at the start, and, and, and basically wasted my tether. It's no problem. We are going to finish this uh, on this run. I'm trying to stay <clears throat> far enough back that I, I, I'm not putting myself in any danger. But now what I'm going to have to do is completely miss a platform of damage. You see here, I'm just going to do couple of shots, move with the his darkness blast, and then I'm just going to go to the end. As I say, being calm and collected in these situations is, I managed to rescue it, but be making sure that you have a, a strategy, and don't, don't, uh, don't, don't, don't stray from the strategy, because when you do, you're kind of trying to make things up on the go, so, on the fly. So when we get here, I'm, you know, again, as soon as he fires his darkness blast, he just move out the way, and there we go. So, Linear Fusion Rifle, Fusion Rifle is going to be really, really strong this season. Uh, and I hope, I hope you guys get some good rewards from doing this. As I say, the first encounter gives you the sniper and the hand cannon. The second encounter gives you the auto rifle and the sidearm. And this encounter gives you the shotgun and the pulse rifle. Shotgun is basically the same archetype as Fell Winters. Thanks a lot for watching guys. I appreciate you as always watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and I will see you guys in the next video.